back at it again, baby, and, we, and we've got an interesting one. Let's dive in. And finally tonight, how do your feelings about economic inequality impact your sense of happiness? NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salmon finds out. It's part of his regular reporting on making sense of financial news. How happy are you? Scale of one to four, one not at all happy, four very happy. I'm a four. A four? I'm very happy. Lori Sanders works at the conservative Washington think tank, the American Enterprise Institute. A few blocks away, Occupy DC'er Eric is on the more liberal end of the spectrum. What number would you give yourself? One. Are you unhappy, do you think, because of the inequality, economic inequality in this country? Well, yeah. Study after study, it turns out, finds conservatives happier than liberals. Yale social psychologist Jamie Napier has a theory as to why. Yeah, I was going to say, I have an idea as to why that is. But let's 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 hear what she has to say about it. And then I'll chime in after she gives us our gives us her thoughts. Economic inequality really does affect people's subjective well-being. Napier's work has convinced her conservatives are happier than liberals because they think there's equality of opportunity in America. One of the biggest correlates with happiness in our surveys was the belief uh, in meritocracy, which is a belief that anybody who works hard can make it. Um, that was the biggest predictor of happiness. That was also one of the biggest predictors of political ideology. So it's that conservatives were much higher on these meritocratic beliefs than, um, than liberals were. Liberals. Yep. That was exactly what I was going to say. I feel like more people on the left feel pessimistic about the situation. Uh, you know, economic inequality. If you uh, feel poor, well, find yourself a good or service that people are willing to pay for um, or equip yourself with the skills uh, that someone is willing to pay for. I mean, I don't I hesitate to say it's that simple, but it's kind of that simple. Y'all let me know what you think, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Talk to me. It's like we're on these meritocratic beliefs than um, than liberals were. Liberals like the folks we found at Occupy D.C. who don't think the opportunities out there are equal these days. Their message is clear. Uh, we can have democracy in this country or we can have great wealth concentrated in the hands of a few, but we can't have both. Um, I feel like you're wasting your time sitting out in the park making signs where you could be out taking some of this concentrated wealth and putting it in your own pockets. Like there's better ways to use your time than to make, I mean, like do what you want. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to tell, you know, rule people's lives or anything, but if your true concern is wealth, then why are you doing something that's not going to get you paid? Right? Am I am I correct? Y'all 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 let me know what if I'm wrong, please let me know that I'm wrong. Please, please. I don't want to be rude or anything, but I don't know. Like I just feel like it's quite simple. Think the opportunities out there are equal these days. Their message is clear. The system is not fair. Everybody here at this Occupy movement is here because they've had enough and they're angry. And chances are, you know, people here are very unhappy with the way that our society works. I believe that things should be equal uh, or people should have more of an opportunity to become closer to the 1% because right now it's like the 1% is the 1%, the 99 is the 99, and we kind of don't stand a chance. The conservative AEI. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a middle space. And what... What what exactly constitutes the one percent? Like what's what's the income level that constitutes one percent? I, I need to look that up. So I came across this statistic. It says that an average American family needs to make basically six hundred thousand dollars a year to be considered part of the one percent. And I think that number is very uh, interesting because a lot of people I feel I could be wrong. I feel like a lot of people think that when they mention the one percent they think of billionaires you know the bill gates the warren buffett's the elon musk and and, and those guys uh as as the one percent uh they don't think about the people who are making less than a million dollars which don't get me wrong that's a lot of money it's a lot of money but it's not just these far off you know people who can literally buy anything that they want to it's 
people that live in your same cities and you know what I mean? That that possibly even live down the street from you. Because in reality, six hundred thousand dollars isn't what you're gonna take home. Uncle Sam is taking almost half of that, right? So I think that's something else that we have to take into account as well. You're not taking home six that, that might be what you make, but that's not what you get to pocket, <laughs> right? Um also I would love to ask her what she meant by equality. Like, what do you mean? And, and I feel like there is equality of opportunity because you can you can go. She could go and make a lot of money, obviously would have to equip herself herself with skills that people are willing to pay for. But she can go make a ton of money, but she'd rather spend her time on the street protesting, which is totally fine to each his own. Do your thing. But. Time is of the essence, especially when you're talking about making some serious cash. You have to value your time. And if you don't, well, I guess you're not going to be making the kind of money that you would hope to make. But maybe I'm wrong. Y'all let me know how you feel in the comment section below. Staffers, on the other hand, think we do. How many of you, on average, think Americans get what they deserve economically? Reza John, who grew up in Pakistan, believed in Horatio Algerism for all, sort of. I would say not everybody is able to pull off those kinds of success stories. But in this country, more than any other, you know, for the work you do, you are able to better yourself. That's true no matter who you are, said Jesse Blumenthal. The pull yourself up by your bootstraps notion works here much more than really anywhere else in the world. I always say, suit up and lace your boots up. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. And it's why I mentioned, you know, wasting time making signs and protesting. Like, wh what are you doing? You're crying about not making money, but yet you're not focused on making money. You know, like you're not making it, but you're not focused on it. Like you're spending your time doing something that is not going to make you any dollars. So like, what do, what do you expect? And like I said, to each his own, she's totally within her right to make signs and protest and do whatever she wants to do with her time. But it's kind of backwards, right? Oh, now, optimism alone does not determine contentment. Religion boosts happiness. So does marriage. But Napier's research accounted for that. We adjusted for education, for income, for marital status, religion, um, people who lived urban versus rural, all kinds of things. So, you know, on average, just your ideology alone is an independent predictor of your subjective well-being. It is true that, that conservatives tend to be less concerned about income inequality. Arthur Brooks, president of AEI and the author of Gross National Happiness, agrees with Napier about the conservative happiness edge. Conservatives think that fairness is one in which outcomes are based on merit and people start with more or less equal opportunities or at least we're working for equal opportunities. Uh, if you believe those things and you see that some person makes more than others or the, the top 1% is breaking away than the bottom 99%, that's not going to affect your happiness very much at all. But with the average wage flatlined and more than 28 million Americans still jobless or underemployed, do merit and hard work really drive success these days? They don't care the late comedian George Carlin's viral video answer has become a liberal credo. The owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. <laughs> Napier says American economic malaise of the past few decades disheartened everyone, but liberals most of all. Right. So everybody was decreasing in happiness as there was more inequality, but liberals to a significantly uh, greater extent than conservatives. I feel like part of that is also due to social media. And I've stated this before. On social media, we get to see highlights of people's lives. As a matter of fact, they're not even highlights. People take the highlights of their life and then they take the highlight moments of those highlights. Let me, let me say that again. People take the highlights of their life, right? This whole scene, vacation with, you know, lots of drinks and beautiful scenery. They take that, those moments and then they take the best of those moments. And that is what you get to see on social media. Nobody's posting, oh man, couldn't pay my phone bill this week. So my phone got shut off. Nobody's posting, oh man, um, 
you know, car had to get fixed, couldn't afford rent this month, so we getting evicted. Nobody's posting about that stuff. So all you get to see are highlights of highlights all over social media. And so it brainwashes some people to think that is what life is supposed to be for everybody. And if I'm not living that life, oh man, the world is out to get me. And it's just like, no. First off, there are a lot of situations and circumstances, I'm, I'm sure, regarding that highlight of a highlight that you don't understand or know about. Maybe that person's parents paid for that. Maybe that person isn't even happy. They just took the picture and just wanted to post it. They could be totally miserable. Maybe that person did some, some things that they don't, they don't even want to speak of in order to pay for that trip. We've heard about those kinds of stories. Some, some women are, are doing some god-awful things to uh, be able to afford some of these trips. We've heard about some of the stories of um, you know men squatting over some of these ladies and um, doing some... Uh, terrible stuff you know all for the love of the money but she gonna get that check and she gonna get to go on that vacation and post them nice pictures but you don't know about the back end of it literally the back end of it nobody's posting about that and in 1974 the difference between liberals and conservatives on happiness was not statistically significant it was basically ideology did not predict happiness in 1974 and today it does and today uh it, it definitely does how much happier are conservatives than liberals on average? It's about a half a point on a one to four scale. Now, it's not as if liberals are clinically depressed. Indeed, besides unhappy Eric, the liberals that occupy D.C., a protest movement after all, were a reasonably cheery lot. How happy are you on a scale of one to four? One, not at all happy. Four, very happy. I'd probably have to say three. I would say I was wondering why they were using a scale of one to four, but apparently that scale was used a long time ago. So they wanted to keep it going to make a somewhat more accurate comparison. A uh, definitely three plus. And there were even a few fours. Ellie, who declined to give her last name, rated herself a two and a half on the happiness scale. Is the economic inequality and growing economic inequality in this country something that has personally, emotionally disturbed you? Absolutely. No questions. Alan Ball's three plus came despite his concerns about inequality. The reconciliation of inequality is very difficult to do, especially with the system that we have right now. But I've tried to get beyond that because I don't want external things to affect my well-being. There's a temple of love right over there that we're going to put an altar in, and um, we're going to set up a sacred space where people can go in to, to have peace, to meditate. A temple a tad less inviting than the American Enterprise Institute, where, if not ecstatic, neither was any one of them below a three. I'm about three and a half, I would say. I'd probably call it somewhere around a three and a half. It's probably somewhere between a three and a half and a four. Alex De La Rochetta was a three and a half. Lori Sanders, you may remember, a full four. Okay, a ludicrously small sample. But on average, our conservatives scored about half a point happier on the one to four scale than the liberals at Occupy DC. And that's the very, mm, very same uh, gap. Very same half-point advantage found in the study's Jamie Napier sites. No surprise to occupier Craig Hudson. It's pretty obvious that conservatives represent the interests of the rich, I mean, for the most part. So um, people with money generally are happier and generally like to say, well, you know, I got to where I am because I worked hard or, you know, parents, whatever, um, and, you know, anybody else, well, they must not have worked hard enough. If everyone was a conservative, we'd all be a lot happier, I guess, right? <laughs> Probably, but not, says Arthur Brooks, because they are wealthier. It's not true that conservatives are richer than liberals. Liberals are actually richer than conservatives. The reason that conservatives uh, tend to be less concerned with income inequality is not because that they're ignorant. It's not because they're calloused. It's not because they have less of a sense of morality. It has to do with the fact that they see the world differently. See it as a world of just desserts. AEI staffer Stuart James. I hate the idea of sitting around waiting for someone else to come and, you know, sweep you off your feet and save you from student loan debt or or an underwater mortgage or whatever it is. You 
I agree with that. And I feel like a lot of those individuals that were sitting in that park making those signs were are expecting that. Oh, the government's going to come in. Or they're going to they're going to hand us everything. They're going to take the money from the rich folks and 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 put it in our pockets and in this whole sort of thing. And that couldn't be any further from the truth. And you're just going to be sitting there miserable waiting for these government officials to come in and say, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to take all this money from the rich folks and then we're going to redistribute it to you. That that doesn't even make sense. I don't know. Y'all, y'all talk to me in the comment section, please. Make some make some sense of this. It's crazy. Get what you put into something. If you're going to sit around and wait for someone to do it for you, you're going to be miserable because it ain't going to happen. Folks at AEI think their exactly vision just of said. hard work and just desserts would, if applied, make everyone better off and even more equal. The inequalities do make me ha unhappy. I just think that I can contribute to making that better. Meanwhile, back among the so-called 99%, the hope is that a radical change movement will finally address the inequities of our era. And how does that make them feel? I am much happier here um, than I have ever been in Washington, D.C. When you do band together and create something, it's very exciting and a very uh, pleasurable experience. Where's the damn tea? Thinking you're doing something about economic inequality, in other words, seems to make everyone happier, at least for the moment. So a very interesting video there. Um, the happiness levels between conservatives and liberals or the left and the right, I should say. A half a point, and it's remained a half a point for I think the first study was done in the 70s, if I remember right. So, yeah, a very, very long time, and it still remains the same, which is very interesting. Like, it really hasn't changed at all, the, the happiness level. Um, that's an interesting, very interesting t statistic, I should say. Do you guys agree? For my left-leaning folks, what would you consider your happiness? And for my right-leaning folks, what would you consider your happiness on a scale from one to four? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, it's kind of interesting to see how the, the the thought processes are so drastically different. You had the conservatives that were like, yeah, I'm about to pull myself up by the bootstraps and I'm going to go get it done. I'm very happy with the situation. Um, but I, I mean, well, one lady said she was very happy. The other people were pretty happy. Um, but they basically were saying, you know, I understand that I can I am in control of the situation. If I go and put in the work. I can get the pay that I want. I can get the money that I want and nobody can tell me anything different. I'm not going to wait for, you know, Uncle Sam to come in and hand it to me because that ain't going to happen. But then you had individuals on the left that were in the park that were really upset. Um, I don't I don't want to say really upset, but they were more upset than the right and making signs and, you know, having conversations, which is great. But. I, I feel like that was counterproductive to what they were fighting for. They're fighting for more money, but they're doing some things that don't involve making more money. But maybe I'm not thinking about the entire, entire situation correctly. You guys can let me know in the comment section about whatever I'm, I'm missing with that whole situation. Um, but like, share, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Peace and love. I'm out.